Compact system cameras are one of the big growth areas of the camera market at the moment. They've got the flexibility of interchangeable lenses, but they don't have the optical viewfinder and mirror of a digital SLR, which means they can be lighter and more compact. I've put together five of the latest and best models for testing here in the Paramount Viewing Gallery at Centrepoint in the middle of London. Now, the risk of sounding a bit wishy-washy, I do have to say at the outset that all five of these are very good cameras, but they do have their strengths and weaknesses, and it's more a matter of taking account of those to find out which one of them would be right for you. Panasonic are CSC specialists, and their latest Lumix G6 is actually the most digital SLR-like of the five cameras, but it uses a smaller micro four-thirds sensor and consequently smaller lenses as well, so it still manages to be very light and compact. Now, traditionally, those smaller micro four-thirds sensors have meant reduced image quality at high ISO settings, and to some extent that is still true. It's much improved, though, and also there's a lot of other things to like about this camera that can make up for that. It has superb video performance with a wide range of frame rates and an external microphone socket. It's got an extremely comprehensive range of features. You've got a built-in viewfinder, you've got built-in flash, you've got a twizzling touch screen, you've got NFC and Wi-Fi. I actually preferred the images produced by the other Micro Four Thirds camera here, Olympus's Pen EP5. It's a retro design harking back to Olympus's 35mm pen compacts from the 1960s. And it's one of those bits of retro design that, just like BMW's Mini, I think works very well. It's nothing like the original, but it manages to capture the spirit of it whilst also being bang up to date. It's got lots of interesting features. I particularly like the two control dials which you can uh, switch their functions using this switch here. For example, on position one, you could have them set up for um, aperture and shutter speed, on two for um, ISO and white balance. It's got a gorgeous articulating touchscreen and a built-in flash. It doesn't have a built-in viewfinder, but Olympus is selling this magnificent external one, this VF4, with a magnificently wide field of view, wonderful resolution. Overall, it's a very desirable camera indeed. Most CSCs use a larger APS-C size sensors as found in most digital SLRs, and this is Samsung's latest, the NX300. Now, Samsung haven't traditionally been up there with the best in this market, but that's all changed with this model. It's got excellent fast autofocus, it's got a sharp 20.5 megapixel sensor and a good kit lens to help with that. It's also got lots of innovative features. I particularly like this eye function button on the lens, which means you can use the focus ring of the lens to quickly flick between various important functions depending on which mode you're in. It's got Wi-Fi and NFC built in and the Wi-Fi was refreshingly easy to use. I was emailing pictures from the camera in seconds. On the negative side, it does feel quite chunky and large, and you don't get either a viewfinder or a flash built in, although you do get this extra one supplied. Plus, Samsung's NX mount offers a relatively limited choice of lenses at the moment, but it is good value. Sony have been big in CSCs from the start, and this is the latest, their NEX6. What's clever about it is that it manages to combine so many of the essential features, the built-in flash, the built-in viewfinder, the adjustable screen, in a body that's so compact, helped in this case by the motorized zoom lens, which is reminiscent of the kind of lens you'd find on a camcorder. The main weakness is the NEX menu system, which can be quite frustrating and impenetrable at times, even when you're using the camera regularly. Finally, there's Fuji's X-E1, the most expensive of the five cameras, the most traditional looking with uh, delightful features like this uh, traditional shutter speed dial. Traditional on the outside, but advanced on the inside. It's got Fuji's X-Trans CMOS sensor that has a unique and different arrangement of pixels that's claimed to give an almost film-like image quality and improved sharpness. I certainly found the image quality on this was better than the other cameras here. Other advantages include the fact that it uses Fuji's really excellent range of uh, X-mount lenses, some of which are very desirable optics indeed, like this uh, 14 mm It's also, I think, arguably got the coolest styling of the five and an excellent electronic viewfinder. However, there are a few drawbacks as well. The screen's fixed, the video options are limited, and crucially, the autofocus can be frustratingly slow, meaning literally you can miss the shot. As I said, all five of these are very good cameras. Which one would I choose, though? Well, I'm very tempted by two of them. I'm tempted by the Fuji X-E1, and actually, 
could conceivably sort of invest in a range of X-mount lenses in the hope that Fuji will eventually launch a faster autofocusing body to go with them. However, I think it's just pipped by the also very gorgeously styled Olympus pen that uh, is also very competent and is, by a small margin, my favourite CSC out of this lot.